Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. My myth today is on the standard of beauty amongst women. Is it really beauty or obsession? Victor is saying today that passion is not enough for success. Juliet labels helplessness as the evil genius in our mind. And finally, Elijah talks about realigning the educational system for global relevance. As always, your panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holds barred. Stay with us. Beauty standard. Is it really beauty? Today I'm going to sound like an old person, yeah. The topic I want to bring to light is the current warped standard of beauty. The reigning thing is to see women in all kinds of wigs, with makeup attuned to drag queens, face colour very different to the skin tone of the rest of the body, and impractical nails that are more like claws. Who sets these standards? Why are women obsessed with them? Who is this all for? Let's look at the hair. Weaves and wigs are far from new and even go back as far as antiquity. However, in this current day, we see all kinds of wigs on ladies' heads that look nothing like what comes out from the head naturally. I understand the functionality of wigs as a protective style, as a fashion item for convenience, but what I don't understand is putting something on your head that looks clearly fake. I am not against wigs as a practical necessity, but why put something so fake on the head that would never grow naturally from a black person's head? Then let's talk face. Studio production makeup, it seems, has become standard for everyday wear. Foundation colour that is shades lighter so that the woman's face is Fanta and her arms are Coca-Cola. Eyebrows that I'm still confused about. Is it one eyebrow or two? What with the white around the brow? White lines and highlighter on the nose and cheek that make me think of battle marks of war. The overall appearance is similar to a drag queen. In fact, our standard of beauty today as women is actually a man. Bob Brisky, when I think of it, seems to be the aesthetic most women are going for these days here in Nigeria. Then add the skin bleaching on top and you know we have a problem with who we are. Whilst this topic can be amusing on the surface to discuss, it actually goes to the root of how deep our disdain for ourselves is, something that the colonial master did a good job of doing. Beauty was that of a blonde, fair-skinned, blue-eyed European woman, and we are still dealing with the ramifications of that as the antithesis was the dark-skinned African woman, and this was shamelessly directly used in advertising. Use this soap and you'll go from a dark Negro to a fair Caucasian. This narrative is absolutely and completely false. Think of the beauty in the versatility of our hair, the beauty in our unique features, and the beauty in the many shades of our brown skin. There's nothing wrong with enhancing what we have. But why are so many women going to the extreme? If you ask men, they prefer a more natural woman. Is it that we women are doing this to compete with other women? All I know is that those of us with daughters need to instill in them from an early age that they are beautiful as they are. Teach them to love their natural hair, to love their features, and to love the color of their skin. Decolonize the mind, and we can decolonize our bodies. Hmm. <clears throat> A very sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. It's very sensitive. It's age long. And the decolonization you're talking about mm -hmm. should start from the home. Mm -hmm. However, the home is just a tiny fraction of the entire world. And the cosmetic industry, the mindset passed down by the colonial masters, has, is so, so big in our hearts and in our minds that it's difficult to actually override this natural beauty mm -hmm. thing. But what we know is that there are some upsides of this artificial beauty mm -hmm. enhancers, if you like, they help some women's confidence. Mm -hmm. Some people actually would actually hit themselves 
if not for these hair aesthetics, mm -hmm. facial aesthetics, skin aesthetics. But you're, you're right. We don't need these things to be beautiful. Beauty is supposed to come from within yeah. and shine out. And men claim they like us natural. But when we see the kind of girls they hang around with, <laughs> it's the other kind of girls. And it puts pressure on us women. I don't think if the world was populated by women alone, we would bother. I, I don't think. Maybe we would. But I don't think we would. So we do it for you guys. And you guys, we see the choices you make when you go out. And there's pressure for us to be accepted by you guys. Just the way you guys go around and do stuff about money so we can accept it. So it's, it's a good one to decolonize, but it's going to be a long one. What do you think, Victor? Yeah, I, I think um, we're struggling with mm -hmm. self-identity mm -hmm. and self-esteem. But it starts with self-identity. Mm -hmm. I mean, the beginning or the essence of life begins at um, identifying who you really are. And let me get a bit neurological. There was a certain horse that was tied to a very um, strong iron. It was blue in color. So the owner took the horse after like one year and then took the horse home and then tied it to a blue chair, like a very weightless chair. Maybe a plastic blue chair. Plastic blue chair. And um, the horse couldn't leave that location for another year. It's called learned helplessness. I'm going to talk Great. about that today. That's what it means. It's called these smart, smart people in the studio today. Learned helplessness is in the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, it's a very, it looks like a funny yeah. thought, but it's a very interesting topic, it's right? very deep. Beauty begins in the mind. Why do we ascribe white good, mm -hmm. black? The lighter, the rider. You get so mm -hmm. naturally, people just believe that if something is white or if something is fair, you know that is how um, that it's good. It's That's beautiful. Quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then if it's dark, if it's black, it it's is inferior. I mean, if you mm -hmm. do the data, I don't, I don't have the data, but if you do the data, mm -hmm. lots of people want to change from becoming black mm -hmm. to becoming. Fair. And I don't have an issue with people wanting to. Look, yeah, we look enhance, better, look enhance, better enhance, enhance their I mean, thing. If you, if you make some yeah. money, you want to enhance, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. But again, at the basics of that, why are you, mm -hmm. you why do you want to change your mm -hmm. skin? Because color? of you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. So I, I actually disagree with that. But, but uh, Elijah Felix, yes. as a man, please let's get your opinion because <laughs> I disagree with Juliet on that. Oh, uh, yes, and that, I actually do to some extent because mm -hmm. if, if not because of the men, because. Even if the men were out of the equation, mm -hmm. some women will still do it because yeah, of true. jealousy. Mm -hmm. among competition, some, I think. Yeah. Competition, jealousy. Now, let me give you a practical scenario. I, I, was, I, I told you earlier when we were sitting at the lodge that two or five years ago, there was this Chinese journalist, a, a, a journalist from China. Mm -hmm. She hails from China in the US and she was bullied online, mostly some by chauvinists, I guess white chauvinists in the US. And they were telling her that she looks quite ugly, she doesn't fit into the system or so. She had to go for a cosmetic surgery to look like one of them. And it went south. I'll give you another situation. There's another one that trended on social media. If it's not, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, a woman that wanted to go for is it boot enhancement or yeah, something? Yeah, we don't know. It Tell us. Out. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Eventually, she go one of Enhancing the gluteus. I saw it. So a woman is as beautiful as what she thinks she is. So I don't think we need enhancement. You cannot be basing your beauty and confidence on something that is temporal. So yet. let's tell women the truth. Toyet. I'm not saying Toyet. Toyet. Let me interrupt. Mm -hmm. But don't base your beauty we on something that is temporal. Thank you. Thank you so much. We see your choices and it influences us. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking for most women. Mm -hmm. I actually, yeah. I've gotten to a level of awareness as a person yeah. that I... tell us our choices. So we're talking about women. No, I'm saying because we see. That's I'm why it was good pressure. It. I'm not going to describe, <laughs> but you get what I mean. So I if you guys sure. start a campaign, mm -hmm and make the natural ones look beautiful. Mm -hmm. What do you think will happen to like, us? No, no, but if you do that, that's irresponsibility. And no, what, so, the, so no, this is the... This what, is this. What, what, what I said that was, <laughs> you've got to accept yourself the way by you are. yourself. I agree. I don't need to accept you. I agree. To, you get, so I agree. You're putting you, pressure on the man. And, and no, no, I'm not but saying pressure on you. I'm just in saying... In that I will agree with you, Juliet, now. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that. It takes a lot of level of awareness. To accept yourself for who yeah, you are. Yeah, and self and self reflection. So that's why a lot of you do stuff to make money. Well, don't well, well, you well, do Julie, stuff to make I money. actually agree with that instance. So men do know what they want actually. Fair point in that it also does actually seep into the male psyche because you are told what a beautiful woman is, exactly. right? Exactly. So if if I and I and I and I had an, an argument with a friend, unfortunately she's passed away now, and we always used to debate these funny things, and she, she never understood when I explained to her that there's something that 
I have an advantage of in this country, just like in, in America it's white skin privilege or white privilege. Here, I have light skin privilege. And I was explaining to her that, and explaining scenarios that it exists. And I'm very conscious of it. I don't feel it's right. And I really feel, for me, I think dark skin, brown skin is beautiful. My husband is dark. Fair skin is beautiful. But we need to see that variety of, of aesthetic mm. in our advertising, in our media, mm. and stop pushing this just one form of beauty. The beauty has, has many forms. Form, yeah. But it does this, this, for example, I'm just picking the light skin thing because I'm light skinned, mm. and everybody in the, who's watching this will see that. It does exist. I can look absolutely terrible, right? and be standing next to a darker-skinned young lady, and she's dressed nicely, and the guy will always pick me. Mm. <laughs> because you're because, because he's not because even <laughs> seeing what I think. He's not well, even seeing me, he's trends. just seeing <laughs> the color of the color of my skin. Color. It has to be better he's for you to be lighter skin. So it, and it doesn't mean that he doesn't find that other one attractive. It's just we've been programmed so yeah. deeply yeah. by yeah. colonization yeah. that anything that is closer to the white man and is better. Tonya, so, let me even tell you something. Guess what? It, now that I'm dark skin, mm -hmm. let me start to... You're not dark skin, though. Why are you talking about dark skin? You're not dark skin. Okay, <laughs> compared to Tonya. I'm darker okay, than I'm you. I'm darker. I'm okay, darker. So, now that I'm not so, so light, yeah. if I start to, to tone, that's what they call it, if I start to bleach yeah. my skin, I'm, mm. you will that see the line of... That annoys me. Okay, bleach. Because you it, see, it, 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 you it, see it, the it, line of men. So if I was having like two men having interest in me now that I'm like this, once I start to trees. to mm -hmm. use the right color of hair, I mean those colors of mm -hmm. hair, mm -hmm. those makeup, mm -hmm. the cue extends. I'm just saying this is one of yeah. the influences. Mm -hmm. But if you check some of those men, their wives and their sisters. It's just like when you guys have money, you <laughs> see that the queue of women increases. It puts pressure on you guys to have money and buy fancy cars. Some of you don't care about the cars and the watches you buy. Look, I think you bring up something really important because you go to the supermarket and all you see is toning cream. <laughs> the, the, the brightness, skin <laughs> bright. <laughs> bright. So, I been so I have to be really conscious well, about what I'm passing. It's, 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 it's business. It's business. But, but That's I why think, I can't be more risky. Think it's business. But it's case, a vicious cycle. This is where advocacy comes in. The relevant government authority. I'm, I'm okay. going to go back. Go back I want to say something. Is you the man? relevant government agencies should make sure those people that are doing cosmetics, cosmetology, uh, whatever, they should make sure they do things that are real. You know, Let me give you an instance. Hot Somebody hot post hot something hot. on social media. I think I forgot in the country where the person's uh, edited image mm -hmm. says better than the, this. And the, mm -hmm. I think the government had to force that particular point. They had to force the person to take it off social media because you are going to put pressure on people. That's not who you are. Why are you projecting what you are not? And so that's where uh, regulation comes in. Yes, yes so since we cannot bring regulate ourselves. Good point about regulation, but I think it's something that we just also have to be conscious as citizens. Some people don't conscious. are not conscious. You have to spank them with the consciousness. Yes. That's, that's and that's 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 you men will join. Uh, yeah, sure. All uh, right. right. I think that was a lively discussion. I wish we could go on and on because I really say. enjoyed it. <laughs> so after the break, Victor talks to us about passion and success. Passion is not enough. We may be already used to the popular cliche, follow your passion. This is not entirely wrong advice when applied in the right context. From my interaction with career professionals and business entrepreneurs, I can confidently say passion has been taken to the extreme and lost its true essence. The easiest way for a subject or a concept to lose its meaning and essence is when we go extreme with it. Passion is very important when starting out your business, but it's not going to be enough. If you think about it, cars are not driven on passion. If you're passionate about driving, but don't have the skill and knowledge required to drive, then you can passionately kill yourself while trying to drive it. Passion may get you started, but you soon run out of it if you don't add the required knowledge and skill to passion. So a combination of passion, knowledge, and skill is required to succeed in business and subsequently in anything. I see young chaps moving solely on passion. The interesting thing with passion is that you can passionately kill yourself. We need to follow passion, however, with a huge dose of skill and accurate knowledge. This is two life coach. I felt like this was a life coach. This is a life coach. This is a life coach. This is a life coach. I mean, 
-hmm. Passion is a start point yeah. because you need that of enthusiasm to master or muster, mm -hmm. muster yeah. the stress of business or any skill or any issue. Mm -hmm. But it is not enough True. because besides just doing something, you need to think of how to excel at it. The passion doesn't help you with that. Mm. You need the skill. Not. So you, you summarize everything about everything, not just business, even relationships, even health, life career, generally. everything. Life generally is beyond passion. Mm. Passion is a good way to start, but to progress, to sustain, you need knowledge, you need skill. So well done, well said, Victor. Fantastic. So like, well, I think passion that, should, yeah. should be the datum point, okay. the datum level. Let me say like entry level. Hmm. Uh, you are passionate passion. about something. Fine, good enough. Thank God you are passionate about that stuff. Add the necessary skill, add relevant network, mm. ideas and knowledge, and go from there. Mm. So passion is not enough. It's very, very true. Mm. Very true. So I agree with that. Maybe Tonya has something else. But passion is killing me. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> passion, is, passion, is, passion is important, actually. Passion is painful. Mm. Passion is stressful. Yeah, it is. You know, be careful of that thing you ask for because you might get it, mm. right? And so I definitely go with passion. Um, just in my experience, I tend to kind of throw myself into things and then try and just float. Mm -hmm. it's try, you know, I'm like a duck, still on the top, but like I'm feverishly yeah, working, working on the bottom. And, and so I think you bring up something very important, especially for young people out there, because that's really, when you're young, is really when you have a lot of passion, you have a lot of dreams. Energy. Mm. You have a lot of energy. Yeah. And you have time. It's, and you have time, yes, exactly. So it's easy to kind of run away, away with that. But at the same time, yes, you need the skill. Yes, you need all this, blah, 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 blah. But really, you, 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 without the passion, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, so when we work on productions, when you're doing, going through the creative process, there has to be someone with that vision. There has to be someone with that passion. If it's not there, all the reading, all the skills, all that, it doesn't matter. It falls very flat. Sure. So the key element is that passion. Yes, you need the skills, but it's not always a cerebral thing. Mm -hmm. It's often an organic thing. So yes, passion kills, uh, it's killing me, <laughs> but at the same time, it is the major ingredient needed. It is major. The other things are like sides, mm -hmm. like, you know, when you order your food and you order a side. The, the other things are the sides. Yeah. And but that's, the that's why I said, thanks a lot, Tony. That's why I said it's not enough. It's I, not I enough, recall, yeah. you know, I talked to a lot, bunch of entrepreneurs having businesses, so what do I do and all those things. And I was speaking to one, he was going to be a social entrepreneur. He just got out of school, future for NYC, and I'm like, so, so I'm passionate, I just want to, I want to impact 10,000 lives, you know, I just want to start an NGO. So I'm like, okay, so what do you have currently? Do you have a personal um, financial yes. economics? What sustains you while you do this? Well, I don't have a job, I don't have any money. I believe that, you know, when I put it out there, people will support, they'll give me the books, the bags to go and share in the schools. I'm like, what you need now is to take that passion, right? Keep it somewhere, right? Keep it locked in somewhere. Go and get a job, learn, serve, right? Work, get some money. And then sustain because again you can't be a beneficiary of the NGO that you're supposed to be serving. Mm. You know when you're serving um, um, marginalized community, but you are marginalized yourself, mm -hmm. right? You've not been able to take care of your personal economy. So you need to get a job. Then with the right timing, then you can now have um, bring in the passion. So like you said, passion is important, right? Mm -hmm. It's key. Without it, really, um, you really can't even move anything. Right, the vision, the knowledge. Again, using the analogy of a car, I may have, I may know how to drive. Mm -hmm. I may have, I may be a good driver, a good drifter. But if I don't have the passion mm -hmm. to go drive, I would not drive. The car will be there, the keys will be there. But I think it's an interesting um, position to be than mm -hmm. I have the passion to drive. And you can't drive. And I can't drive. Mm -hmm. And then I try to drive again. I think the first time I tried it, I, I bashed my dad's car. That's a result of that. <laughs> So I can pass, you can pass, so I'd rather stay alive with knowledge, right, oh. and then work on my passion. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, then let passion I don't, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Sorry. You have to choose. I, I, I don't know about that. No, 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 cheese, I'm just saying that. I, I, that's why I, I disagree with enough. that. The two, the two can be complementary. They can go together. Original, passion and But I see a lot of young chaps running only with energy, passion. I have an issue. Well, I wouldn't call it 
اجازه بدید شما بگید 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 Juliet is next after the break. Do stay with us. The evil genius in our subconscious mind. Let's talk about learned helplessness today. I want to tell you a short story about how learned helplessness can hold us back from being more having more and doing more. I will talk about learned helplessness in a bit, but back to my story. Once upon a time, a man was walking through the circles with his son when they noticed something very interesting. In the elephant area, all the elephants were secured with a tiny rope. I mean, this rope was tied around one of their foot. The rope was so tiny that all the elephants had to do was just move that foot with some effort and they would break free. These are elephants that weigh anywhere from 2,000 kg to 6,000 kg. Let's put their weight in perspective. That's like 40 to 120 bags of cement or rice. They were huge elephants. Why then did they not attempt to break free? Was it jazz? So the father and son went ahead to look for the elephant master trainer. I mean, the guy has to disclose the source of his powers, right? The jazz man that he was using. And the trainer told them something very profound. When the elephants are very young and much smaller, they use these same ropes, these same tiny ropes to tie them up. And at that age, the rope is strong enough to hold them down. So initially these elephants, these young elephants, they try to break free, but they quickly learn that they are powerless to do so. So eventually they believe it is impossible to break free and they grow older with this same belief. So they never bother to break free again, even though now they are bigger and it's possible without much effort. I think there's an important lesson we can all learn from this story. What the elephants are experiencing is called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness occurs after a person has experienced a painful, a stressful situation repeatedly that they come to believe that they are unable to control or change the situation. So they do not bother to try, even when opportunities for change becomes available. Are you experiencing this in your life at the moment? <laughs> Did you, for example, repeatedly fail math in secondary school and now believe that you can never enjoy the subject? Let's look at your finances. Have you been experiencing financial difficulty for a very long time that you now think or believe that you're not destined for wealth? Or have you had your heart broken by so many scally works over these years that you now believe that no one can love you or value you. What is that learned helplessness or limiting belief that is preventing you from living a fulfilled and a happy life? Well, this is the first time I'm hearing the term, but I'm very familiar with the pattern because I think it explains a lot of uh, voter apathy you know, in Nigeria, if we put it towards, you know, government and society, people are just like, why go out to vote now? We know it's not real. We know our vote do doesn't count, etc., etc. And yes, that may have been in the case in the past, but it, sh it shouldn't stop us from trying. And that's why it's in this example that I've picked, it's really, really important that we engage the youth because the youth are going to come out full fully in 2023 
So it's for, to catch those ones that are in that state of learned helplessness, to say, hey, look at the other half of your youth. They're already on it. They're, they're really on it already. But they need you. Your time is worth it. Your vote is worth it. If you want change, if you, if you want to get out of this helplessness, all you need to do is take off that rope and walk. You know, so I think it's a, great, it's a great point and it's a great analogy and I've just never heard the term before. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it's you wonderful. You. you know, I said on this show before that man and bat is a tabula rasa. <laughs> and the mind, the, the, mind, oh, 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 the, mind <laughs> the mind is so elastic, so elastic that it can go to any length to which you can stretch it. Sure. Because humans are the, it's, are, it's, it's, Humans on Earth are Earth's great treasure. Now, let me tell you something. There's this story I also had. Let me talk about my own animal story. Mm -hmm. Horse was stuck in the mud, and uh, the owner tried to pull it out several, and he couldn't. After all said and done, he thought about something. Let me bring other horses around it to, run, to move swiftly around the horse, and he played the battle song that the horse was used to hear in the war, the war drums. And suddenly, the horse was able to jump out of it and head towards the war front. But see, that's how the mind works. You know, when you are just used to, oh, it's like this, it has always been, oh, let's do, my father could not do it, so why can I, how can I achieve it? Nobody in my family was able to achieve it. Uh, maybe me too, I won't be able to achieve it. I can't get there. That's where you'll be stuck. But the mind is so elastic, and it works like a software. It so does. you put the right applications in your, your mental computers and work. You can break free. Break free. So, Victor, so the way you are the, a life coach. The way to break free mm -hmm. is, right, <laughs> is to create a similar pattern. Mm -hmm. So I remember somewhere in the Bible where Jacob, you know, um, Jacob and Laban's story, mm -hmm. and it was almost looking like he cheated Laban because those um, um, goats that were brown spotted were probably mm -hmm. brown spotted. What he did was just simple. He was showing, when they were mating, he was showing those, um, the animals, brown mm -hmm. spotted trees, and they mated after what they were seeing. Mm -hmm. So that means your perception, your vision can override your DNA. Mm -hmm. So in your DNA, they were supposed to meet after, let's say, black spotted um, um, offspring. Mm -hmm. But what they were seeing overrode their DNA. Mm -hmm. So one way to do with the story, what, you, what we can do is to bring another elephant tied to the same tree. A new and elephant. And make the elephant move. Sure. Once the old one sees that, oh boy, this guy moved. This guy, I, can, I move. can move. So I think... Tying it back to what Tony mm -hmm. said, we need to show you that the economy can work. True. If you're telling me that if I go out and vote, it's going to count, how? You need to show me something. It has to be very organic and strategic. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's going to be a journey. Okay, you know what? The, the local government is working now. Very soon, the, the next level will work. The next level will work. You can't say that, you know, by 2023, and that's always the mistake. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is going to become better and everything is going to work. No. Let's say a local country is going to start working and then from there the federal like that so i think we need to start showing young people you know results showing young people a different image mm -hmm. those things that people play out right because what you lock in as a belief system you play out in your behavioral patterns sure. and you get that as a result so we need to call up reframe reprogram mm -hmm. change the image we we change the image we change the outcome and language is really really important in that there's a it term is. that's currently used in a lot of um tech space mm. edtech fintech all that and it's the unicorn. unicorn and i really dislike the use of that <laughs> really right. i get why they're saying it but what it then puts in the mind's eye at these are rare that these are, are few and far between. Mm. So it then kind of removes that hope. Mm. It's far reaching. Yes, it's far it's reaching mystical. because it's a unicorn, it's mm. myth, it's mystical. It's myth, yeah. And what we should be saying is that, yes, this has happened. Let's keep trying, let's keep going. This isn't a unicorn, this is just the beginning. That's mm. the framework issue, it's mm. the beginning. Mm. You know, these are the first ones, there's more to come. Mm. Rather than using terms like unicorn. The, so the anytime group, I see yeah. that on my, <laughs> Feed. I'm just like, oh, stop using this term. I get why you're using it, but it's not really helpful to the nature of what we're trying to do for mm -hmm. this country and what that space is trying to do for this country. So I think um, um, language is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And key is, is realizing that if you are have this learned helplessness, right, that does it equate to hopelessness? It doesn't. 
So it's also to kind of realize, okay, you may feel helpless, but are you hopeless? Mm -hmm. Is it that far? So I think hopelessness is even worse than mm -hmm. helplessness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just let me just add something. Please just add. like in the world of financial trading, you must see this. When you are trying to grow your equity, your accounts, you grow up with your strategy. There came to time that you have drawdowns. The mm -hmm. account is going to fall back to mm -hmm. a certain level. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to rise again. This, the curve is not usually smooth. Mm -hmm. It's always up, drawdowns, mm -hmm. up, drawdowns, leaks, drawdowns. So during that drawdown, it's the job of the trader to maintain a positive mind. Okay, my strategy is going to work probabilistically the edge is in my side. If you think your strategy is not going to work, the moment you try to help yourself, you blow up your account. So that's how it works. If, if evil keeps winning, mm -hmm. I think would be so excellently used to allowing evil to thrive. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I think we should start projecting. When you're talking about Nigeria, you know, start talking about some things that are working. The more we keep talking about yes. things that are not working, yes. and everything yeah, sure. about yes. not working. Because that and is we're so all true. Of these things. Oh, we're not, yeah. the country is not working. And we're saying this thing at a very mm -hmm. subconscious level. Yep. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Once we're saying these things, guess what? The universe speaks those words. Mm -hmm. That is great for us. Or is, yeah. it, or is it the metaverse now? We're, we're back to that. We're back to this again. Mm. So what I've got, to, what I've got, to, what we've got to here, guys, is that Nigerians, we are our lives are fraught. Mm. We've learned helplessness mm. in everything, mm. but there is a solution, and there's a way to break this habit. Mm. It starts by you checking and asking yourself if that statement, that thing, mm. is true. Mm. Mm -hmm. If there is an alternative, if it is possible to break it. And if it is helping you, mm. if that belief is not helping you, you should think of changing it because like Tonya said, there is hope. After this break, Felix is going to end the show and we'll be right back. Realigning educational system for global relevance. Nelson Mandela once said, and I quote, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Now, is our current educational system ensuring the right education for our children and preparing them for the future? Recently, I had a conversation with a little girl, and she told me that she was taught about the tribe that is associated with the usage of different perfumes in Nigeria. <laughs> then I went through her books, and I saw that in one of her subjects, she was also taught that it is the duty of the mother to cook and clean, and the duty of the father to provide. I became disappointed and disgusted at such level of parochialism in our educational curriculum. School curriculum ought to evolve continually and should be in tandem with understanding issues of local and global concern. This will enable our children to grow with the right kind of mindsets, relevant skills, knowledge to challenge the status quo and change the world. For educational system or curriculum to be relevant for a fast evolving world, where globalization is at the center and fostered by technology, the following should be considered by relevant authorities while planning for the educational system. Appreciating globalization. Exposure to global issues ranging from learning about history, culture, and contemporary issues. Understanding technology. We are now in the era of connectivity, metaverse, virtual reality, automation, and robotics. Skill acquisition. Soft skills like enhancing cognitive ability, effective communication, empathy, and enforcing positive values. Fostering creativity. Children should be guided to discover their potentials. Innovation and intelligence should be refined. Education is beyond schooling, but we must ensure that our schools should be the right environment where our children can get quality education. So let's discuss your thoughts. You're talking primary and secondary school. Yes, primary yeah. specifically. Yeah. So, um, hmm. well, the fact that we don't teach history is a problem. So I think it also starts with that, is that we need to know who we are, who we were, to know where we're going. We need to know ourselves and then place ourselves into the context of the modern world. Um, and so we have an issue of the identity right off the bat. We need to completely change our educational system. I'm sure everybody here will agree, agree. with me. It's absolute outdated. nonsense. It's outdated. And what really taught a lot of parents that is when we were on lockdown in COVID and we're all teaching our own children. 
<laughs> and I totally revamped their curriculum and understood that, look, it's not all about open book, learn this, learn this. They had to learn how to take care of themselves. They had to learn how to cook and clean, and not just the girls, the boys. True. They had to learn to garden, to plant things, to clean, to imagine, to draw. It doesn't, it's not about your skill. It's not about the ability at that point. It's about exposing children to all the things of life and allowing them to find their direction within a framework, of course. And we in Nigeria, we have a tend to just say, you will do this, you will do that, girl does this, boy does that. And not realizing that we're shortchanging our entire society in the long run, in our future. Because what you segment or partition what one child in and put another in is what you're doing for entire future and a nation and we need to think in larger terms when we're thinking about the education of our of our of our children but i can go on and on because i have special needs child and that's <laughs> yeah. another yeah. subject yeah, that's another. Well, well, the one. thing is the thing is shortly before i get to juliet <laughs> i can feel your pain now look at this issue you teach your child the right thing you are trying to teach your children to learn about how to take, be responsible and then when they get back to school imagine this curriculum where they have to tell them that the father's job is just to provide and the mother is to cook and clean. And then they come back to tell you that this particular tribe, I won't mention the name, they are used to using different perfume. How has that got to do with mm -hmm. the reality on ground? And then they're messing with your children's mind. So curriculum, our curriculum should be devoid of sentiment on tribal or gender sentiment. So your thoughts, how do you think we can carry along young people? Because they need to grow these children, they need to learn skills from small. How to so, build themselves? So firstly, with the, since you're saying, asking this question, so the, my first answer is the home is the primary educator mm -hmm. of the child. So that's what I'll say for that. But, but let's look at the educational system as a whole. You see, I think the main work should be done by the ministry. This is me. Yeah. Because before now, we went to sleep when we saw that there was a huge value, it was huge value, huge, huge improvement in the private sector. So we all focused and put our children in the private, private sector school, and yeah. the government sector suffered. So maybe the ministry was not governing the private sector, apart from when they get given licenses and, this, and the likes. But now, like Tonya said, with the COVID, we saw that the entire system locally is crap. So now it's, it's biting everybody. It's really biting people. So the ministry has to have like a bl blueprint. They have to like have a, an agenda, like a goal. What did they want for, what kind of end game do they want for our children? What do they want our children to know, to like, to do at the end, I mean, while passing through mm -hmm. the educational system? Mm -hmm. And create that curriculum that will sink that. It has to be done at a national level because now mm -hmm. the entire system is it's messed broken, up. Man. And people are thinking of sending their children abroad now at very young age because we're waiting for university and masters mm -hmm. before. Now mm -hmm. people are doing okay. secondary school at okay. grade nine. People are thinking of sending their kids abroad because they're structured. Their curriculum is in sync with the time because they're doing researches, time, yeah. they, are, they are implementing, and we are just there with the same textbooks we it's use. I'm still doing computer sciences using book, using binary code. You see some computer tests, but like this is what I used like 20 years ago. And so we're not even involving. I think the sector, the ministry. The ministry. But is there even the will to involve? Is the will there? Because you bring up that, that point about. The, the private sector, the private schools, everybody sends uh, the children to private school, whether it's the low one or the <laughs> high one, because unless you have any choice, unless you don't have any choice, you, 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 you will send your child to private school. Otherwise, you're forced to send your child to government school. And I don't really know what value government school is giving, apart from maybe they're getting the free meal for the child for the day, <laughs> if that is still in effect. <laughs> so... It's, it's so messed up and it's so frustrating. And just on top of the kegs of powder kegs of explosives that we're just putting on top to explode this country, this is a major one because this is the foundational years. Yeah, and is. these are the important years. And these are the impressive years. And children eventually will wake up to the fact that what they're learning is nonsense, that why should they even bother? Mm -hmm. That's Sha is just to do yahoo yahoo, or they'll just let me school just learn cryptocurrency co and start uh, trading. <laughs> and school is a scam. And to be honest, <laughs> university is a scam, in my opinion. Okay. But we're not, we're just talking about primary, <laughs> primary and secondary school. Well, Victor, what is this of Victor, you have to speak now. So, I mean, I've got two things to say. First, um, I think that what we have consciously or subconsciously trained. Um, to become from cradle, you know, 
is to be literate and not to be educated. Mm -hmm. So you can know stuff and you are not educated. How many first class really, you know, that we produce every day are really educated? Mm -hmm. Education changes you as a person. You're able to use that knowledge and apply it. I love the fact that Tonya said she's able to take her, you know, her children on creative thinking, imagination, doing stuff and all of those things. When someone made a joke, I mean, I've been learning X, Y, X, D, Y, D, X. I came into, the, into life and life was not asking me X, Y, you know, find X and find Y. I wasn't looking for X. I was looking for money. But nobody taught me financial intelligence. And I was learning X plus Y equals to O. And life doesn't care about that, right? So I, secondly, I believe, um, like Juliet said, the, the, where your heart, where your treasure is, is where your heart will be. And where your heart is, is where your treasure is going to be. Where is the heart, right, mm -hmm. of the, our leaders? Mm -hmm. You know, where is the treasure? Where are they putting the treasure? Where's all the money going into? How much funding goes into education? So like she said, do they really care about education? Yeah. I mean, it's not about, I mean, when it's election, we start eating with young people. Yeah, that's <laughs> not it's such a, about. It's such a, it's such a good thing. thing. Like, I, you just, you just yes. nailed it. But there's something, there's something we've been doing recently, like um, Wimby's, as some organizations. Wimby's just did one of the big sister, the big sister program. Okay, we yeah, went to yeah, different yeah, public yeah. schools, but secondary school children, it was amazing. Because even though they think the school system is a fraud, but by seeing us, mm -hmm. seeing us that are otherwise successful, I think it gives them that aspiration because it was like some form of mentorship. I, I mean, I really respected the heads of schools who allowed us and went to like about six, con six cities. Six cities. I'm sorry, there was Calabar, there was Port Harcourt, Abuja, Lagos, and somewhere else. And they shared over 80 of us to those schools we went to all the classes, we did some mentoring. It was really, really nice. Maybe we can also do that while we're waiting for the Minister okay. of Education to do that. Yeah, we can't wait for Minister. I'm going to chip this in. I hope they will listen to us. I remember several times we've been in convocation ceremony where they will say the best student in accounting so, so, get 5,000 or 50,000. And then somebody will do one something not so necessary, entertainment, and get 10 million naira. I hope you know that the country and the economy will not only be built on entertainment. We need quality education. Indeed, society challenges are never ending. Hence, they need to keep advocating in our private spaces with the hope that it all coalesces into improved humanity existing. Join us again next week on another edition of The Advocates. The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To, to catch up with previous brokers, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. <laughs>